And sharks are interesting because they have a long evolutionary history. The lineage that led to sharks diverged from the rest of vertebrates about 415 million years ago. So they often have very unique traits that the rest of vertebrates don't have. And so we're trying to document those traits by using comparative CT scanning technology. This is great. This is really nice. It actually looks quite nice like this. The lemon shark is a very typical shark. They don't have a bony skeleton. The entire skeleton is made up of cartilage. They're fusiform in shape, sort of bullet-shaped organisms with teeth at the front end and fins to guide them through the water. There's something a little bit peculiar right here. There he is, dinner. <laughs> The fish in its stomach is pointing from head to tail, so we can actually see the fish went down the animal's throat head first. This tells us they're ambush predators. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. When we first see these specimens and, and they've never been scanned before, we can get quite excited because we see features that weren't immediately apparent from just looking at them from the outside. But the real reason we actually are interested in CT scans is because it provides us information that we can use to associate the traits that these living sharks have with many of the fossil sharks. Oh, hi. So here we oh, you got the specimen. Yes, Great. the Paleospinax is ready for prep. You're going to wrap it up? Yes. Let's hope it scans OK. It looks like it should. Would you uh, yeah, just <laughs> hold it in hold place? It <laughs> this on one side here. Scanning a fossil is a bit different from scanning a fresh animal because you've got to contend with different densities, the rock. This particular fossil that we're scanning today, we're fortunate in that it's in a kind of a rock we call a shale. The x-rays will go through that kind of rock very easily. That should do it. And we are go. So that's good, we can see some of the teeth here. You can see, the, yeah, you've got the jaws here, the, the two jaws. You've got teeth in here, you can see the rows of teeth all the way around. When you get a good scan, then you can actually start to isolate features within the scan images, and which you can look at in all three dimensions. For example, the inner ear of sharks has evolved three semicircular canals, an anterior one, a posterior one, and a horizontal one. And we find that in early sharks, 350, 400 million years ago, they're all interconnected, much as they are in our own ears. But if you look at modern ones, we see the posterior canal is in fact separated off, which enables the shark to detect low frequency sound. The low frequency sound detection is very useful if you're a shark because it can be used to detect prey, uh, especially if it's thrashing around, at very long distances. The world is littered with the remains of ancient creatures that once lived on this planet and then, for whatever reason, became extinct or evolved into something else. Part of the fun of paleontology is uncovering that history and ancient shark fossils have really been transformative in what we know about early shark evolution. Sharks are a lot more diverse than many people think. There's a widely held view that sharks haven't changed in millions of years. But in fact, they've changed a lot. And reconstructing the history of these animals can tell us a lot about the actual process of diversification.